You've had your children. You looked in the mirror and didn't recognise yourself. Has your parents taken a back seat to your kids? Let's see what's involved in what we call a mummy makeover. Welcome to The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps a giving. Not even close to the end, it's just beginning. Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah. And then to good, I won't even worry anymore. To all my care, still can kick them all out the door. Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for. Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to The Younger You. What is a mummy makeover, you might ask? Well, let me take you through the steps. It's a combination of surgeries to help you get your pre-baby body back. Our candidate, Kemi, is a 41-year-old mother of four who felt it was time to get her baby body back to what it used to be. We'll be showing you what has happened over two episodes. But first, let's see why Kemi felt she needed to go down this path. So, Kemi, you're having what we call a mummy makeover. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, why now? Well, I'm done having kids. You're done. Finished. Yes. yes. <laughs> Finished. <laughs> and I'm 41 yeah. and I figure now is a good time. Let's get into this. What is a mummy makeover for you? For me, it's a breast lift and augmentation. Okay. And then a tummy tuck. Okay. How do you feel about that? I'm a little nervous, you know, mm. both at the same time, but a lot of women do it and I've researched it a lot over the internet and real life. What do you expect? after the results have been done? Um, a flatter tummy <laughs> and <laughs> breasts where they used to be when I was a teenager. Yeah. What does your husband think? He thinks I don't need it, but... Because he do, loves you. Yes, he's like, I, you're perfect the way you are, but I'm, this is for me. I don't, I'm always been, I've always been self-conscious, mm. especially in a bathing suit and with summer season coming up and yeah. I want to look good. So. Okay, tell me a little bit more about Dr. Clayton. Do you um, just feel comfortable around them? Some doctors, you just like, ah, oh, when you're showing everything, basically. <laughs> and his nursing staff, they're all wonderful. I have been told that. I, I think he's a charming man. Yes. Um, and my thoughts on him is that he seems to have a very good bedside manner. He does. You know, he seems very reassuring. Mm -hmm. Did he make you feel at ease? For sure. And when you're having these type of things, you need to feel at ease, don't mm -hmm. you? And he answers any questions you have, and he makes you feel comfortable. Let's speak to the doctor who took such great care of Kemi. Dr. Clayton, he's a specialist in body procedures like tummy tucks, body and breast lifts, liposuction and breast augmentations. Is there nothing you don't do, Dr. Clayton? I do quite a few different <laughs> things. <but> um, <laughs> question. Do most women have all the procedures done at once like Kemi did? Uh, probably more women do not. Uh, this is a special mommy makeover procedure that we're trying to help women get back to their pre-baby image and maybe even enhance that some. Fantastic. Can we got the breast augmentation and breast lift. What is the difference? Can you explain to sure. me? Sure. Uh, augmentation of the breast is to enlarge the breast, whereas lift, breast lift, is to bring up tissues that have descended either through being stretched out with pregnancy or gravity. Kemi went from a B to a C, is that correct? That is correct. Is that the most common size that women would normally go for? That is probably the most common size. Uh, some women would like to be a bit smaller than that in the final um, um, healing and, and size uh, that they're looking for. So with the different sizes, does that differ from how long it takes to recover from the operation? Uh, not really. Okay. Um, actually, the, the healing is pretty much the same whether they go uh, up one or two cups. Wow, really? It Fantastic. is. Fantastic. What type of implant did you actually do on Kemi? We used a silicone implant. Uh, that differs from a saline implant. What's the difference? Uh, a saline implant has a silicone shell that's filled with saline mm. at the time of surgery. The silicone implant is manufactured with silicone in it. And we have an ability to adjust the saline implant to some degree. You can't do that with a silicone implant. So once you've picked the size from the silicone implant, you're basically stuck with it unless you have a different change. That is true. And that's why we spend a lot of time in the preoperative period helping a woman decide what is the change she would like to see. Okay, so let's talk about Kemi's breast lift. Okay. So what was that procedure like and how do you go about that? Uh, basically what we're doing is uh, taking out excess stretched out skin mm. 
and tightening the breast tissues, elevating the nipple and areola to a more normal level. Okay. And what type of candidate would be having this normally? It would be somebody that uh, notices that their breasts are drooping more than they did. Uh, a simple test a woman can do on her own is if she can put a pencil in the fold of her breast and the pencil stays there, it usually means she may need the breast lift procedure. If it stays there? If it stays there without ah. her t holding it. Is it quite common for women when they're going in to have a breast surgery that to have a mammogram? It's probably more frequent that women don't get it, but if there's a history in their family of uh, breast cancer, mm. it would be a good idea to get a mammogram prior to the surgery. Okay. One of my girlfriends just recently had breast implants done mm -hmm. and she was telling me that she thought it was going to be more difficult to have a mammogram after the implant. Is that true or false? I think that's not true. I think uh, because of the position of the implant, which is under uh, not only the breast tissue, but generally under the pectoralis muscle, the tissues are brought away from the chest in a way that it makes it actually more easy mm. to get a mammogram. What are the risks associated with these two procedures that Kevin had done? Infection, uh, bleeding, uh, something we call dehiscence where uh, the wound would come partially or even uh, more extensively apart, mm. requiring after care. One of the things that can happen is that um, they are disappointed in the outcome. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure we have properly educated the patient ahead of time so that they and we are on the same page of what their goals really are. Then we're more likely to avoid that kind of a problem. Having an augmentation and a lift at the same time, does that make the recovery longer? A breast augmentation by itself has a quicker post-operative period of healing mm. in the sense that the incision is much smaller Whereas with a breast lift, there are more incisions uh, that have to heal, and the healing time can be longer than just an augmentation by itself. Dr. Clayton, are there different types of procedures for different types of breast lifts and augmentations? Yes, there are. Uh, Talk me through that. Okay, for augmentation, generally the implant is put under the muscle in this day and age more frequently than on top of the muscle. Okay. Uh, there are special situations where we may still put the implant on top of the muscle. Such as? If somebody has what we call a tubular breast, that's mm -hmm. a very narrow based breast, more like a tube, mm. um, then that needs to be opened up to allow the tissues to drape over the implant. Oh, okay. And in that case, we may put the implant on top of the muscle. Mm -hmm. As far as breast lifts go, there are different degrees of lift depending on how uh, much sagginess a woman might have. Mm. Uh, th such things as a simple crescent above the areola, if it's very minor uh, drooping, to something uh, we could call a circlage procedure where we go all around the nipple areola, adding a vertical component where we take out excess tissue below the nipple areola, and then the full lift where we're taking out in a horizontal direction as well because of so much excess tissue that's developed. Is it better to have excess tissue <laughs> for these type of procedures or, you know, less is more? Well, if you have more, we can deal with it, but we have to do more uh, takeout. Therefore, the scars generally are a bit longer. Uh, that's right. the difference. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great information. I appreciate that, Dr. Clayton. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at Kevin's procedures. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. Okay, the first thing I'm going to be doing here is injecting some local anesthesia that can help her in the post-operative period. It's a long-acting local anesthetic. Now I'm going just a little bit deeper um, to do a block of the nerves coming into the breast area. And this will help her when she's waking up to not have very much discomfort. Today she'll be in recovery, waking up slowly. This usually takes several hours. And then she'll spend the night here. And then 
she'll go home, I'll check her first thing in the morning and make sure everything's fine. And, and then uh, over the next few weeks, she'll be recovering at home. Uh, the first week, she'll need help. But uh, by the second week, she'll be up and about uh, being able to be fairly independent. I like my patients to start walking early, and so we have them, uh, the nurses help her walk e starting this evening. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the right side here. So the first thing we'll do is make an incision here and dissect under the muscle and create a pocket to put the uh, implant in. This is just a little handheld cautery device that helps stop bleeding. So now that I've started the correct plane, I'm just gonna use a dissecting device that can open the uh, under the muscle. This is one of the implants we're using. It's a silicone gel implant. And we just carefully uh, put it into place here. Already, she has uh, a little more fullness there than she had. And so now we're going to do the same thing on the left side. So again, we're putting the local anesthesia in this pocket so it should be comfortable. And we're putting the implant in now. Mm -hmm. I'm just checking the pockets to see that they're symmetrical. Okay, so what I'm looking for is to see that the implants are even and also the markings that we made for the lift are they in the right place? And they look like they will elevate the nipple up into a nice position for us. By putting the implant under the muscle, what we found is they do not lose any strength in their chest muscle at all. So what we're going to do at this point is close this muscle. So this suture is going in to re repair the opening through the muscle we had to make so that we could get the implant under the muscle. These are dissolving stitches and uh, the muscle fibers will start uh, uniting again, growing together. And, and so by the time this suture dissolves in just uh, six to 12 weeks, it will be united again. Now we're going to do this side. The implant's right under the muscle here, so I need to be very careful in putting these stitches in that we don't injure the implant. So at this point, um, that's the deep layer. I'm not going to repair anything more superficial because that will be incorporated into our breast lift operation, which we're going to proceed to now. This little instrument helps define how big the areola will be. And some women, it gets to be larger than ideal. So we have a way to decrease its size by what we're doing here. So what we're doing now is making the incisions in the pattern I designed for her prior to coming into the operating room to tighten up the sagginess she has in her own natural breast tissue. And all these marks we put on our patient prior to her coming in the operating room earlier this morning. The mastopexy, the breast lift part we're doing right now, uh, normally uh, women don't need it until either they have had some children and got some sagginess from that, or uh, certain women have a problem with the same condition just from aging. As the tissues get more relaxed and loose, um, 
breastosis or sagging of the breast can occur uh, at a later age. So it'd be unusual to do this lift operation like this in somebody that um, was young uh, prior to having children. What we're removing right now is uh, just skin and in fact just part of the skin. We're going to leave a dermal layer, the deeper layer in place, but we're just taking off the outer layer of skin here so that we can move this nipple and areola up in position. So this part of the operation is very superficial. Now what we're going to do is just loosen up some of this tissue superficially. So it feels to me like that's probably loose enough so that we can start putting in our key sutures. So my assistant Lisa's going to be pushing the tissue out of the way for us. And it's, it's uh, quite surprising how nice things come back together. Okay. This breast sags more than the other side, so we'll be taking a bit more skin out. She is a little larger on the right side naturally, so I'm going to take just a little of her natural tissue out to be more balanced. So what we're going to do now is some liposuction of these areas off to the side. So now we're going to do the closure of these uh, two breasts. Basically, that everything is going as, as we want and she would want. Coming up after the break, I hit the streets again and asked you, the public, what you thought about mummy makeovers. Plus, Kemi, our mother of four, is in the studio talking about the procedures that you just saw. women have their tummy tuck and uh, their breasts redone. Anything that happens during pregnancy and childbirth that would stretch your skin out usually is removed. I think it's where you um, go in and get cosmetic surgery done on like your stomach and get your uh, lift and maybe a little fat move from here and there. Yeah. I've had some cosmetic stuff done already and I would love to have more. <laughs> I wouldn't I, I think it depends on how much um, stress your body goes through. Yeah, yeah, I would. <laughs> and I've had three kids, so for me, that's important. I've had four children, and I have considered it. Um, I am a little nervous, however, about the general anesthetic and the dangers that go along with that. But it's really hard after I've had three kids. After my third one, it's been really difficult to get down to where I've wanted to be. I think there's some pressure from society just to be thin, to look like you did when you were 20. Especially with all the stress and everybody, like all the stars having babies and everything, they want you to get down. You're supposed to be down to a certain size right away and I just feel like it's been really rough for me to get to that point. And it really isn't a pressure to have plastic surgery, say, but they do want you to be thin and so if diet and exercise aren't working for you or it's just something you choose not to do, I think that's really probably the best option. I don't think everyone necessarily feels on their own that they need that done, but it, if they have family or friends that are looking better than them, they feel the pressure. Well, I think if they want to have surgery after, they should. 
It makes you have better self-esteem. Sometimes your body just doesn't bounce back the way it should after you have kids. But I think it's for the individual to decide on what's really important to them. If that's really important, they should do it if that makes them a happier person. I don't really think it's being self-centered. I think you are doing what's best for your self-esteem. I think you're doing what makes you be confident. We all want to get straight back into our clothes we had on before and everybody's looking at you to see how long it takes to get back into them. There is loads of pressure. There's a lot of self involved, but I'm not sure I'd say it was self-centered. Um, I don't think it's an ego thing. We're all 20 years old inside. We want to look like we're 20. We look in the mirror and we don't look 20 anymore. And um, you know, you do what you have to do to, to match that person that you still are inside. You're still young. Welcome back everyone to The Younger You. Well, I'm here joined with Dr. Clayton and Kemi to talk about her mummy makeover. Hey guys, how are you? Good. Good. So we're going to be talking about the breast lift and augmentation that you had. Kemi, how are you feeling? Great. Are you? Yes. You look fantastic. Thank you. So Dr. Clayton, how long did it take for the breast augmentation and the breast lift procedure on its own? The augmentation portion was done first and took uh, approximately one hour. And then the lift part took an additional hour and a half. How's her scouring? Is she going to have much scouring? Uh, she's had done? She'll have some scars, but the way we do the scars and the care we give afterwards generally minimize the scars. Okay, so what do you mean by that, the aftercare regarding the scouring? One thing we do is take the sutures out at the appropriate time. Mm. Much of what we use is dissolving. Yeah. And so they're supporting the wound uh, for a prolonged period of time in the healing process. That helps. The other thing we found helpful is to keep either paper tape or steri strips on the scars for about two to three months. Oh. And uh, we find that that helps tremendously to have a very nice scar. Wow. Kemi, can I ask you? Sure. How do you feel after the procedure regarding your breast lift and augmentation? I'm very pleased with are it. You? <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> They're perky and back to life again, That's aren't right. they? That's <laughs> right. Back to teenager life. <laughs> That's good. Um, how long was it before you could actually start with your everyday routine again? For exercises, about a couple of weeks ago for me, so about six weeks. Really? Yeah. That's not very long, is it? That's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's great. Um, are the results of a breast lift permanent? Will they start <laughs> sagging again? Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do something about gravity, and yes. so that is still going on, as is the aging process, where tissues get more relaxed as we age. Oh, okay. So it is possible in the future she might need tightening again. Mm -hmm. However, the augmentation itself should be permanent, the should way be. it is. Exactly. So when you say could do with a little bit of tightening again, mm. will it be a similar procedure and just as long, or be, it'd be quicker? It'd it's be like qu a nip and tuck. Yeah, it'd be quicker. <laughs> Uh, t typically, we would just have to take out some of the tissue that might have uh, sagged and tighten her yeah. once more. Kemi, would you do something like that if you felt that they were getting a little bit saggy? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Really? And how's the feeling? Have you had any issues regarding loss of sensation or...? No, not at all. I feel great and they feel normal to me, so... Good. And what about your back to exercise? Yes. A couple of weeks ago, I started exercising really? again. So what's your exercise routine? Zumba. I really love to oh, do. Oh, really? There's, so, there's a lot of bouncing and twisting and stuff. So yeah. I Good. And did big. you decide to just go up one cup size for a particular reason? Or? Yeah, I didn't want big. I just wanted to feel for my body, you know, body size and proportion wise. Kemi, now you've had the procedure done. How long did it take before you got back to full mobility regarding? Oh, uh, probably a good month for me. The first couple of weeks were pretty hard to mm -hmm. have, you know, mo maneuver around and to to do anything basic, to get dressed or to... So talk us through what that actually felt like. What were you having trouble doing? You were saying just to get dressed. Just to get dressed, put a shirt over my head even, mm. or, you know, um, and you're take a shower. And you're expecting that. You'd been yeah. told all those situations. Yeah. Yeah, and now you're back, you know, work full time, and uh -huh. how long did you take from, from I took two from weeks work? off of work, mm. and I felt okay. I was a little tired the third week, but after that, I felt 100%. Have you got any concerns moving forward? No. No, none. None. None whatsoever. I love no that. No regrets. I love it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question, Dr. Clayton. Sure. 
Um, in, in the press, there's lots of talk about leakage or breakage regarding mm -hmm. the implants. What's the facts on that? What's the deal? We now have a, um, a cohesive gel implant that we use. Mm. Uh, that implant does not leak. In mm. fact, uh, you can cut it in half, and because of the nature of the gel, nothing comes out. You have to squeeze it hard and it may bulge some, but it doesn't leak like previous uh, versions of the silicone gel implant. Okay. But it was more of a liquid that if you were to cut it in half, it would pour out. What are the health risks? Uh, research has been done not only in the United States, but throughout the world, and it indicates that even with a leaking implant, there are no actual health risks. The silicone is a very inert material in our bodies. And particularly with the new uh, implants, they don't even leak. Uh, and the FDA released them about uh, five years ago uh, to general use because the safety was demonstrated. That's interesting. It's good information. Kemi, tell me, what does your husband think of your new breasts? <laughs> oh, he, he loves them. Does he? Yes. And he was all for it. He was, but he was like, you don't need it. Yeah. He's like, you don't need it. I'm like, well, I'm doing this for me, for myself, so not for anyone else. I love that. And I love the attitude. I like that you've got a positive attitude about it. You knew what the, the risks and complications were, yeah. but you also knew the upside of That's what was right. going to be the happening benefits as well. Of it, yes. The huge benefits. <laughs> Dr. Right. Clayton, they look pretty good so far. Yeah. I can't wait to find out what is happening next week as we explore the rest of Kemi's journey and see her final results. For more information about the show, head over to our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Coming up next week, we'll hear all about mother of four, Kemi, what she had done on her tummy and her final results.